Welcome to the International Boreal Online Conference on Ecosystem-Based Forest Management. My name is Victor Säve and I'm one of the co-organizers of this conference and will be the moderator during question time and at tomorrow's panel debate. The topic of the conference is, as the title reveals, Close to Nature Ecosystem-Based Forest Management in Northern Europe's Forests. For the sake of simplicity, I will call this eco-forestry. This is a conference about the visions, complexity, multiple challenges and solutions and opportunities for future sustainable forest management in boreal Europe. The conference is organized by the Lapland district of the Finnish Association for Nature Conservation in cooperation with Protect the Forest Sweden. Before I start my introduction speech, I just want to give a little brief info. Since you who take part in the lectures and participate in the conference cannot see each other, I thought it might be nice to know that we are around 200 participants from more than a dozen countries, that they are everything from EU officials, government authority representatives, scientists, forest companies, to private forest owners and forest interested private persons who participate. Thank you all for being here. If you want to ask questions to our keynote speakers, you can post these questions in the chat that goes directly to the hosts. We will then select individual questions. I'm now going to say a few words to kind of set the tone that explains why we took the initiative for this two-day online conference. Mankind has caused a two-fold global existential crisis. Interlinked threats of climate change and loss of biodiversity are now our most difficult challenges. The policy decisions made in the next few years will be critical. How we manage the world forests is central to maintaining biodiversity, protecting ecosystem functions and preserving the climate. Halting the destruction and the fragmentation of natural forests, as well as restoring, expanding and adapting the world's forest to climate change, is fundamental. At the international level and within the EU, various solutions and policies aim to regulate emissions and to stimulate what is hoped to be sustainable solutions for land use. Through the knowledge presented at this conference, we want to contribute with the perspective and a holistic approach that we believe is fundamental for making sustainable decisions concerning forest and environmental regulation and policy and for management. Researchers have pointed to a need for protection of 30 to 50 percent of the land ecosystems. Consequentially, we see the formation of international environmental targets that say that we must set aside 30% or more of our land ecosystems for nature conservation in order for us to have a chance of meeting our environmental goals. What is a sustainable forestry? According to the Helsinki Resolution, sustainable forest management is the stewardship and the use of forests and forest land in a way and at a rate that maintains their biodiversity, productivity, regeneration capacity, vitality and their potential to fulfill, now and in the future, relevant ecological, economic and social functions at the local, national and global level and that does not cause damage to other ecosystems. With this definition, it's easy to state that we in the Nordic countries today generally do not have sustainable forestry. Few people who hear about the Nordic forestry model understand how it works. It's best described as tree farming. All the forests are clear-cut and often the ground is harrowed. The most common regeneration method is to plant pre-grown seedlings. After a while, the trees are thinned and when they are considered harvestable, the stand is clear-cut again. The forest industry has long claimed that the forest management in the Nordic countries is already sustainable and ecosystem-based and mimics wild forest fires. But this is far from a scientific truth. I would like to quote one of the scientists lecturing at this 
conference, Timo Kullerweinen, on this issue. He writes like this in a scientific article. In particular, the generalization that the boreal forest is regulated by fierce stand-replacing disturbances leading to the dominance of even-age stand successions has been disproved. However, this misconsumption has, until now, been repeated and used to legitimize the dominant practice of clear-cutting as a nature-based way to manage the forest. The practical conclusion of this review paper is that the dominating forest management model in North European boreal forests, which is based on the clear-cut harvesting of timber and the growing of even-age stands, is in contradiction with the variable and complex characteristics of the disturbance succession cycle observed in naturally dynamic forests with neglectable human impact. End of quote. Productive forest land is land where it's potentially, from a production point of view, rational to conduct forestry and where the forest land can produce at least one cubic meter per hectare and year. In Sweden, there are approximately 23 million hectares of productive forest land. The Swedish Forestry Agency's latest estimate in 2020 was that only 644,000 hectares in Sweden were managed with the agency's broad definition of continuous cover forestry. This corresponds to only 3% of the productive forest area. However, having said that, there is a sharp increase in the interest in more gentle forest management models among private forest owners, municipalities that manage forest, and the EU. This is a positive and necessary trend. Also, far too little of the productive forest area in Sweden has a long-term protection. Only 6%. And if you look outside the mountain area, the figure is as low as about 3 to 4%. There is a strong incentive for more protection and restoration and for a change in the prevailing forestry management model towards one that is based on the natural ecosystem's dynamics and an understanding of forests as complex systems. Unlike the simple and agricultural tree farm-like forestry that characterize today's dominant forest management in the boreal region, this conference is about forest management methods that actually work with the forest ecosystem. Despite the fact that the universities in the Nordic countries have mainly focused on clear-cutting and planting, there are, not at least in Finland, more and more forestry researchers and ecologists who study other forms of forest management, models that are more ecosystem-based and optimize forest use. There are also good examples of close-to-nature forest management in North and Central Europe and the Nordic countries, such as the city of Gothenburg's forest management, Lübeck city forest management, and a large number of interesting private forest owners' initiatives in the Nordic countries, such as the Swedish company Plokhugget and the Continuous Cover Forest Association Silva in Finland. How we manage the majority of the productive forest land, the almost 70% of the first protecting and restoring at least 30% of our most valuable and functional forest lands are an extremely important issue. As an ecosystem manager and a nature conservationist who represent protective forests, it feels important to establish our position on the difference between ecoforestry and nature conservation in today's forest landscape. Ecoforestry should not become a Trojan horse to excess timber and biomass in our remaining more natural forests in the EU. I raise this issue in particular as there are examples where forestry companies in Sweden have used modified forestry methods, so-called mosaic loggings, another word for clear-cutting with a little extra consideration, as an alibi to exploit high conservation value forests that should be protected. Protection and restoration is needed, as well as a new ecoforestry model. A full-scale transition today to ecoforestry will not, in the short and medium term, mean a reduced need for protected forests. 
an ecoforestry model must also include retention, green infrastructure and nature consideration in the managed part of the forest landscape. The reason why you cannot uh, exploit our natural forests are two. First of all, there is too little areas of natural forest to reach the threshold levels of all natural forests at the landscape level for us to be able to preserve living forests and the species that are linked to primary and old growth forests. There is no room for commercial extraction of biomass in today's remaining natural forest in the Nordic countries. Modern forestry means more forestry roads and removal of wood, regardless of the management model, which will further dilute habitats and valuable substrate and contribute to further fragmentation if used in nature-like forests. Second, the ecological delivery time for habitats for species associated with old-growth forest areas with the high concentration of dead wood and old trees is very long, hundreds of years or more. It would take a long time to recreate large amounts of dead wood, old conifer trees, all deciduous trees and other structures in the young and enormous production forest and plantation areas that dominates the landscape of today. Until the managed part of the forest area has become more natural and diverse, this part will not be able to supply the habitats that the more demanding species needs. This is why the need for protection remains high. One should ever not confuse protected forest with ecoforestry management systems. Both are most needed and complement each other rather than replacing each other. This introductory day we will lay the foundation for tomorrow's discussions and lectures on ecoforestry models. During this first day we will, together with researchers and foresters, review the state of knowledge in a wide range of fields concerning the management of the boreal forest and the various individual parts that must be in place for a sustainable management. Knowledge of the ecological dynamics and the biodiversity of our northern forests, as well as the relation of the boreal forest to the climate, has increased greatly in recent decades. However, management and forestry models has not kept up. There is a great need for biodiversity restoration and climate adaptation in the Nordic forests. It's worth saying again, sustainable forest management requires a holistic view of the forest. There are many societal and environmental challenges to be solved where the forest and forestry plays an important role. The forest and biodiversity also have an intrinsic value which is so often forgotten in the debate and the politics. The questions related to forestry are many. The climate threat, the loss of biodiversity, multiple use and public health, water and soil, fossil free versus emission free, substitution, carbon sink and carbon storage, to whom and what does the extraction of biomass go? long-lasting quality products or energy-intensive short-lived unnecessary disposable items. Our first session during the conference will focus on forest management, environmental impact and biodiversity loss. Our first lecture will lay the foundation for the conference by talking about forest history and the natural forests as a reference. His name is Lars Östlund and he is a professor in forest history at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Umeå. Lars, the stage is yours.